Good evening and welcome to DNZ. New Zealand's already a popular honeymoon destination with around 20,000 newlyweds visiting every year. Now though, more international couples are choosing to have their wedding ceremony here as well. Over the past 10 years, wedding planning companies in New Zealand have seen their business increase more than 300%. One such company is owned by Christchurch-based Vanessa Leeming, who finds herself responsible for making dream weddings come true. No, I think we did no. tradition out the window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coming out here, we did tradition out the window. My mother thinks we are in Greece. Yeah, mine thinks in uh, Italy. Pretty, we always knew, knew we were going yeah. to go away and get married, That's but I think right. they were shocked That's when right. we said New Zealand. Yeah, um. we missed the bungee jumping, <laughs> but we married. <laughs> Thank you. I get asked to do all sorts of different weddings. Outdoor weddings, garden weddings, beach weddings, church weddings, um, weddings on mountain tops. Really, whatever anybody has planned, has an idea for, I'm, I'm happy to try. With 10 years experience in the international wedding market, 31-year-old Vanessa Leeming owns one of New Zealand's biggest wedding planning companies. Vanessa organises weddings all over the country. The west coast of the South Island. That's where our first couple have chosen to marry. It's in a secluded west coast beach and it's a real New Zealand feel to the whole, whole wedding and that's what the couple wanted. They wanted something really, really New Zealand. Driving from Auckland, Dutch couple Sebastian and Ariana arrive in Punakaiki. Uh, we've gone to New Zealand because we seen a lot from it on television and uh, in movies so we thought it was a beautiful country to go to yes, we saw a lot on discovery channel also for years and years in the netherlands legal requirements for weddings can differ from region to region in the area sebastian and ariana live couples have two ceremonies one for the church and one for the state they legally aren't able to be married in two different countries. So they've chosen to have a ceremony which reflects their more of a relationship ceremony. Our marriage here is a, it's a big uh, secret. Initially the idea was to go off somewhere and, and marry and then come back and tell our family. Well, yeah, but that's not very practical because we have both mothers and they want to <laughs> have something to do with it. My mother thinks we are in Greece. Yeah, m mine thinks in uh, Italy. For their wedding, Vanessa has organised hair, makeup, flowers, photographers, the wedding celebrant, and accommodation just south of Punakaiki. So it's quite naturally curly, you're here? Vanessa and her entourage make the four and a half hour journey to the west coast on the day of the wedding. It's a little bit unusual to meet on the wedding day. I usually like to meet people before in case they have some last minute requests because once we're here, um, it's very hard to, to make any last minute requests. I haven't had any major disasters. It would make me feel absolutely shattered to think that I'd ruined somebody's day of their lifetime by having not done something properly. So I've always got that in the back of my mind, that I'm in control of the event. And if something happens, it's a disaster. It's my fault. Well, we can go everywhere without I know. that. Yeah, that's we are big fans of uh, uh, the series Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And uh, in season two, Angel gives uh, Buffy um, uh, the silver ring. There's a Celtic pattern on it, and it's a heart with a crown and two hands, and it means uh, love, trust, and uh, loyalty. <laughs> yeah, and I really love that, so it's based on a TV series, which is a great love story, actually. I like it over my... You like it over your suit? <laughs> Maybe it's a bit too Elvis, I don't know. Oh, it could be Elvis today. Oh, thanks. It actually looks great. It's the most pretty girl in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. Yeah. You well. didn't want to get a corsage on? So, I'm happy. <laughs> The couple chooses Punakaiki Rocks for the first of the day's two photo shoots. They've requested both still photographs and a DVD to take back home. Photos over, and without any pomp and ceremony, Sebastian and Ariana make the 15-minute walk down to the beach to meet their celebrant, whom they'd already met the previous day. With their wedding almost upon them, they remain unfazed by the fact that they're doing it on their own. Yeah, this is exactly what he wanted to do without family. Just yeah. the two of us, just cosy. You want me to 
Or? No, it's nice. I like it. Golden nails. It's the best in Maria. In her 10 years as a wedding planner, this is Vanessa's first West Coast Beach wedding. <laughs> okay, rhythm down. Now, we are today 10 years by each Today we're together for 10 years, and I think you're the most beautiful and most strong girl that ever existed. This day, for me, is more a celebration of our bond, but you know that, and uh, I still want to promise you that, Ariana, I will always love you, and I will always take care of you, and I will always respect you, and I will always be the most proud of you than, than anyone in the world. <laughs> I love you and I will always do. I admire you for your strength and persistence. Because of these reasons, I want to promise you at this beautiful place here on the beach that I will take care, good care of you and I will always be faithful to you. The couple were very happy with the location and uh, the weather's just been brilliant, so they're, they're, they're really, really happy. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. It's just perfect, everything. Yeah. yeah. I really love the, love the Vanessa's uh, work. Yeah. yeah. It was great. Great to range, and the weather was fine, so. The location was awesome. I guess. Yeah. 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 The sand flies are a problem. Um, they have been annoying everybody this afternoon. Um, I didn't warn the couple, but perhaps next time we have a West Coast wedding, I'll be a little bit more prepared. While the sun sets on Sebastian and Ariana's New Zealand wedding day, for Vanessa and her team, it's still some time before their working day will come to an end. It's 8 o'clock, and um, the couple are just doing some last-minute last photographs and video, and we'll probably leave the beach about half past 8 and make our way back to Christchurch. Get back midnight. And it's just the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Yeah, I'll never forget the location. No. We'll come back here. It's Vanessa's busiest time of year. During this week, her company will coordinate 10 weddings for couples flying into New Zealand, with Vanessa personally managing three of them. I prepared a, a brief schedule for you just to let you know what we're doing today. Prison officers Gavin and Christine live in England and arrive in Christchurch after a four-day holiday in Singapore. It's just something different, isn't it? It's somewhere that we've always, always wanted to go, to, to come to New Zealand. Away from all the hassle of planning, just all that planning that has to go into like a, a church wedding back home and who to invite, who, who not to invite. People say you haven't seen for years and years and years or people who you don't really, really like, but you think, oh, well, I should really invite them. So this takes all of that away yes, so we can just, right. just be together and just away from all of that, which is great. Last year, around a 1,000 couples travelled to New Zealand to marry, pouring nearly $30 million into our economy. It's a very good thing for the country. It's certainly bringing in good revenues and uh, the, the country, the product here, it's, it's well positioned for it. We've got the churches, we've got the scenery, and we've got the uncluttered lifestyle, which is perfect for a honeymoon. With Gavin and Christine's wedding the next day, Vanessa has organised an afternoon of appointments. First up, she takes them to collect their marriage licence. Weddings can be conducted anywhere. Um, as long as you have a licence and the marriage office licences you to have a wedding in a place, you can have, have a wedding there. And next stop, the florist. We had pale yellows, off-white and greenery. How does that sort of thing? Yes, yes, yes. This one here, perhaps, in the, in the pink. Sort of yes. not that yeah. one, because no. I... I think that's the kind of cool no, I was yeah. thinking yeah. about. Yeah. Cool yeah. Yeah. Then on to meet the minister. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a service that's just for you, OK? Um, we don't do the kind of very commercialised kind of stuff that's obviously put you off going to other places. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I'm going to have to hear some more stories from you that will help me put together something that feels like you. Oh, a nice surprise for us. I quite enjoy it. Um, I mean, at times there has been criticism of the practice within the churches, but I figure that um, Christian people have been happy to bless battleships and buildings for centuries. I don't have a problem blessing people who love each other and want to make a commitment. We process the films into a digital format, which is... Gavin and Christine also need to decide what type of wedding album they will have. You might want to sit on that cushion for a bit of height. The last appointment for our wedding couple is Christine meeting her hairdresser. 
We're we'll happy the way things have gone today. You know, the nerves are starting to appear. That's right. Tomorrow the morning it'll start for real. Big That's style. right. Looking forward to it, though. While Christine and Gavin's pre-wedding preparation has come to an end, our wedding planner still has work to do, as it's too late for the dry cleaners. It's five o'clock now. I mean, I, they'd never take these garments at five o'clock in the afternoon anyway and have them back to me at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. It's generally very, very hard work. I'd like to think it could be more glamorous, but sometimes it's not. I'm sort of like the one arm paper hanger. I'm up a ladder and painting over here and doing something over there. <laughs> Vanessa started out in the wedding industry a decade ago at the age of 21. Well, my father died and left a property on the hill to my mother and I, and I really wanted to find some way of making an income so we could keep it. I was studying at Lincoln University, doing a tourism diploma. As part of my course, I studied the overseas wedding industry in New Zealand. Straight out of university, she started her own wedding business. You know, you had to lease a premises and look for staff and advertising, planning a brochure. It was really a, a big steep learning curve. <laughs> Outgrowing the family home, Today, Vanessa operates out of two houses in central Christchurch. And finally, Vanessa's working day comes to an end. It's 8.30 a.m., the morning of Gavin and Christine's wedding. Good morning. Good morning. Can I bring these in? Yes, bring them in. Well, I wanted to have an early start because um, I, I hate to be rushing about today. Um, so I made sure that I had plenty of time. So I got a wake up call of the, the reception staff at half five. Yeah. I, I got up around about six and I went. Um, when Christine came down for breakfast, I went for a run around Hagley Park. I got, I, I got lost. <laughs> I got lost on the park, so I was about half an hour late. So she was probably thinking I'd run off or, or just deserted the lake. But uh, nervously. Very nervous. With the bride being pampered, uh, do you want to have a look? <laughs> our lone groom paces. It's only one sentence, but with my nerves, I've just I forgot one of the words, but it's symbol. So I was looking for a symbol. Despite this being Vanessa's only wedding on the day, she still has to finalise the other weddings coming up during the week. Bring a basket, please. That's really lovely. I love that. Is that balanced? There we go, I can't see that little man. Put straight beneath Let's the have a look. <laughs> It's looking great. I'm just really pleased with my hair. I'm just really pleased that uh, that my hair and everything's gone gone okay. Yeah. Just hope I fit in my dress and <laughs> put on a few extra pounds with going to Singapore first and, and whatnot. And looking beautiful, 90 minutes later the bride emerges ready for her Rolls Royce. With Gavin already waiting at the chapel, Christine makes the 20-minute journey out to the Sumner location. I've never actually been to um, Gethsemane Garden, so uh, I hope it's the right choice. I'm sure it will be, because I've heard uh, good reports about it, so we'll see. <laughs> Leaving her groom no time to sweat, Christine arrives right on time. The taste of stress. I like to use some Māori language in every service as a reminder to them that they're not just getting married anywhere, they're getting married here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I like the service to be sincere and to not have people going through a form of words for the sake of it. She just like a princess as far as I was concerned, you know. It was just, it's one of them things where, you, you know, you see other people getting married, but you don't, you don't know how you're going to feel till it actually happens, and it was just so emotional. It was really lovely, like, just seeing her coming in. Fantastic. It was absolutely lovely up there. It was from in the chapel, you could actually see the sea outside. Oh, it was perfect. It was a perfect day. Yeah, I just felt so unbelievably happy. It was, it was, it was brilliant. 
after the ceremony, it's down to Sumner Beach for their photos. It was just like living out a dream, really, it was. wasn't it? it was just... Vanessa would arrive earlier to make sure that everything was ready for the, like, the next steps here, like the punting down the river. Just everything was just, just perfect, really. But this was quite a simple wedding. There was only the couple for a start, so there wasn't guests to look after as well. And the weather cooperated, so that made things run smoothly. We were on time all morning, so it, um, it ran like clockwork. Gavin and Christine will get to see their photos the following day. So with a couple of happy punters, Vanessa heads back to the office to continue working. It's going to be busy. Uh, there's a lot of preparation work to do for next week's weddings. Um, I've got to make sure everything's finalised for my couple that's arriving tomorrow morning at one o'clock. Put the names in so here, The week is drawing to a close and I have a lot of things to finalise for, for next week as well. So a very busy afternoon in the office, I think. Yeah. OK, that's fine. It's the middle of the night and despite having already directed a successful wedding, Vanessa's day is still far from over. She's preparing a room at Bishop's Manor. The luxury accommodation she also runs with her mother for its first wedding guests, an American couple who are flying in from Sydney. Well, I'm just going to get the room ready for the couple to, for their arrival, and I just want to light some candles and put some incense on and just make sure that the ambience is nice and romantic and relaxing. I'm a wee bit tired, um, looking forward to actually getting a chance to put my feet up. <laughs> um, but it's all going well so far and it's been a good day, so I hope it ca carries on that way and, and I can relax when I get home later on. It's a quarter to one in the morning and wedding planner Vanessa Leeming is still working. She's meeting American clients who have flown in from Sydney. I've been dealing with Christine on the emails and um, over the last few weeks we've got to know each other reasonably well. Hi. They live in San Francisco. Christine has recently completed a three month culinary course in Sydney. Hi. And Han works in biotechnics. It's her first time to New Zealand so she's been asking me a lot of questions about what to expect and uh, what the weather's going to be like and what she should wear and advice about flowers and things like that. Vanessa drives the couple back to their room for a few hours sleep before a breakfast meeting. It's 8.30 a.m. the day before Christine and Han's wedding. They've chosen to marry at Auraki, Mount Cook. We like the mountains a lot. We like trekking. And I heard that Mount Cook is, I guess, the highest peak on this island. The, the backdrop of this wedding would be considerably more extraordinary than I think what, you know, some of my other friends had. Auraki, Mount Cook, is a four-hour drive from Christchurch, which means an early start for the wedding day preparations. We'll move on to tomorrow, 6.30 start, Christine. <laughs> we can, we can um, bring you some breakfast through while, you, while you're having your hair done okay. or whatever. Um, Han, you've got sort of a free morning right. until about 8, so you can come in here and have breakfast. As Vanessa covers the wedding details with Christine and Han, Photographer Phil Fahey, having worked into the night, puts the finishing touches on Gavin and Christine's wedding album. And less than 24 hours after their wedding, Phil delivers the photo album. And yeah, there's you coming up from the car. Oh, yeah. I think your mum's going to like these. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh, look at that one, Chris. Hey, that's the best one I've seen, that one. Oh, it's lovely. It's amazing, that one. Oh, they're brilliant, Thanks, Phil. Just such a wonderful, wonderful job. job. Thanks very much. Brilliant. They really have yeah. it. Excellent. Oh, fantastic. They really are. Back at the office, it's meeting time. As 60% of Vanessa's clients are Japanese and speak limited English, she employs a number of Asian staff who can meet their wedding requests. I have four full-time staff working for me in the office here. We probably really need to be sitting around here. I have two part-time wedding coordinators that work here, but they, they travel the country. My three key staff, they've been with me probably about five years each. So it's, it's really nice to have people that know what's going on and 
they can slot into any kind of position. I mean, Phil, who runs the imaging department, he can coordinate a wedding if I need him to. He can drive a car, he can even press a wedding dress at, at, if he has to. <laughs> As night falls, Vanessa is still working in her office. Hi, hi, Sue, it's Vanessa from Kashmir Heights Weddings. The day before a wedding, I'm usually feeling quite nervous. We run a triple check system, which means that we make a contact with a contractor or a staff member to do a job. We reconfirm it, and usually the night before, we, we do a final confirmation call. 6.30 a.m., and it's early, even for Vanessa. Feeling a wee bit tired. <laughs> um, but once we get rolling, I'll be fine. We're getting prepared for Christine to come down to have her hair and makeup done. Um, she should be here any minute now. We're just about ready to get started. We'll be leaving Christchurch around 8 a.m., so we've got an hour and a half in which to complete everything and, and get everybody set and ready to go. However, it appears something is missing. The bride. So a quick check to see if her light is on. Well, it's 22.7. As much as I don't want to call them, I really think I have to call them else we're going to start running late. You're still sleeping. So when you're ready, if you'd like to come down. OK, bye. She was still sleeping. Good morning. Good morning. Vanessa's mother, June, arrived to set up breakfast. Coffee, everybody? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I suppose I'm jack of all trades. I'm a multitasker, I, I think you'd probably say. I can really do most jobs that need to be done. And when Vanessa gets busy, she calls on her mother. Hi, good morning. <laughs> you're filming me. I woke up a little bit late. Come on through, Christine. Okay. We'll get you some coffee in a minute. Okay. I set two I alarms this morning. Oh, you did? I swear. <laughs> did they go off? I never heard them. Oh, you never heard them. <laughs> Take a seat. I think it was probably because I overslept this morning. I think being, you know, without your, you know, your family and your close, closest friends on such a special day, a little something is missing, but at the same time, at least we're doing it the way that we wanted to. And... Hi, Han, it's Vanessa here. Are you up and about and...? Yeah, it's a quarter Good. to eight. And Vanessa is aiming for an eight o'clock departure. Well, we'll put you some breakfast together in a She bag. needs to make sure the groom isn't following his bride's example of sleeping through alarms. He's going to be down in 20, 30 or 40 minutes, he said. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Breakfast. OK, great, thank you very much. <laughs> About half an hour behind schedule, Christine and Hahn follow Vanessa and photographer Phil to Aoraki Mount Cook. The wedding was more secondary to, to the fact that we're going to New Zealand. <laughs> you know, they're like, well, that's pretty cool. You're going to go to a different part of the world that none of us have been, you know. You know, tell us what it's like, you know. I hope you take good pictures, you know. Oh, you're getting married? Okay, well, that's good, too. I think they're more looking forward to our pictures of, of this yeah. you know, New Zealand than they are to see our wedding pictures, tell you the truth. Because, you know, you go to Sydney, you go to, like, Tokyo, you go to, like, Chicago, New York, you know. It's a city, you know. You see the same sorts of things there. And whereas, you know, you come out here, it's different. Um, just being, you know, exotic in that sense. That's, what, that's why I like it out here. Despite the late departure, the wedding team arrive on time. The terrain dictating sensible shoes, Christine and Hahn head to their wedding spot. You're coming out here and doing things on our own. Um, it's different and also it's a little bit more relaxed. You know, we can go at our own pace rather than at the pace that's dictated by the huge procession and huge ceremony. So hundred years ago, that valley was full of snow. While Han gets a prenuptial geography lesson, Christine swaps those sensible shoes for stilettos. <laughs> I had these in mind when I picked up this dress. About 11,000 kilometers from home, friends and family, Christine and Han get married. On behalf of Christine and Han, welcome to this wedding. So my dream was to do it somewhere outdoors. I didn't really picture, you know, a church, um, something traditional. And I thought outdoors is kind of the place that that's where I think we feel mo most comfortable and ourselves. And I wanted to have that same kind of environment for our wedding. 
I couldn't have asked for a better day. The weather has been great. I think the people that we've been spending our time with here, um, perfect partner here. <laughs> Just very happy. Actually, being out here is a very calming yeah. for me. You know, I, you know, it's you know, I usually hang out and go hiking in the mountains and things like that. So, I mean, I think if I'd gone to a church ceremony or something, I'm way more nervous. Sweaty palms. <laughs> No, I think we threw no. tradition out the window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coming out here, we did throw tradition out the window. It was great. Um, yeah, it was really a nice ceremony and a nice location. And the weather was great. And a couple of very happy. So all in all, a very successful wedding. The formalities are all but over for our newlyweds. However, for right. Vanessa, despite her 5 a.m. start, relaxing is still some time away. It's uh, five to four and we're just wrapping up here and uh, we'll make our way back to Lake Tekapo. Um, I've got a couple of things to do at my apartment to make sure it's all ready for my client's arrival tomorrow. Once we're done there, it should take about an hour, we'll make our way back to Christchurch, probably looking to get into Christchurch about nine o'clock. And less than 24 hours later, Vanessa will leave Christchurch again, only to return to Tekapo. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, and Vanessa is waiting for a family of nine who have flown in from Tokyo. Uh, we have a group of nine arriving at, uh, at Bishop's Manor uh, for a pre-wedding consultation. And they've just pulled up outside now, they're all coming in. The uh, Hiroko, the, their wedding coordinator, is with them. So we're just um, setting up for some teas and coffees and uh, getting ready for their arrival. Hi, Good morning. Good morning. There's lots of arrangements for this wedding. It's not just a wedding, it's um, transport, accommodation. So yes, it is quite a, a large event to organise and make sure everything's coordinated properly. Despite having spent the previous 11 hours on a plane, there's little time to rest for the wedding party. The bride and groom must finalise their wedding outfits the bride choosing her accessories, and the groom picking out a suit. <laughs> when I first started, I relied very, very heavily on the Japanese market. They are probably the hardest market to satisfy, but as I speak the language and I've lived there before, I know the kind of standards that they expect. So it's probably not as hard for me as it might be for other New Zealanders in the Japanese market. <laughs> the Japanese travel agents were very, very hard work. There were many times when she just about gave up, she would wait year in and year out for them to acknowledge her and send her business. They have a saying in Japanese, they say, um, Ishi no ueni san nenni ari, which means you sit on a rock for three years, they'll, you know, they'll make you sit on a rock and wait for three years and that was told to me often in the beginning and I just thought, well, you know, if that's, if, that, if they have that problem, that's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, hey, no, can't can do quarter past eight tomorrow okay. morning, can do half past eight. While yes, Vanessa continues you. working in Christchurch till the end of the day, the Japanese family are driven to Tekapo. Aya and Shinji are both 26 and met at university. They decided to marry here because they wanted a relaxing wedding amongst beautiful New Zealand scenery. New Zealand is perceived as a romantic destination. And the secondary, New Zealand is isolated on a positive sense. So we can feel relaxed and um, no stress here. When we have a wedding in Japan, we had lots of stress. <laughs> and also, the cost of having weddings here is much cheaper than the cost in Japan. On their three-hour journey to Tekapo, the visitors get their first real taste of New Zealand. Part of the wedding arrangements, 
They're staying at Vanessa's lakeside accommodation. My wedding company is my core business, but I'm stepping into the accommodation business. I, last summer I, I leased an apartment at Lake Tekapo. It's a beautiful luxury apartment at Lake Tekapo with great views. So we've been linking that in with the wedding couples that go to Tekapo for their wedding. My mother and I have just opened a bed and breakfast. That seems to be going quite well and linking in really well with the wedding, wedding company. It's 10 p.m. and for the third time in 24 hours, Vanessa and her staff arrive in Tekapo. I'm just looking forward to tomorrow <laughs> and uh, getting into it really. Um, unpacking the car is not much fun, but it has to be done. There's a lot to unload, with three Tekapo weddings in the next two days. It's the day of Aya and Shinji's wedding, and at 8 o'clock, Vanessa has already been at work for some time. It's been a busy morning. Um, we got up at 6, cleaned the car, had breakfast. I pressed the bride's wedding dress. While the groom tucks into his hearty breakfast with family, next door the bride's meticulous beauty regime begins. <laughs> Two hours later, Io is ready. The Church of the Good Shepherd is a very popular tourist spot, and Aya and Shinji's arrival coincides with a Japanese tour party, much to their delight. We've come together in the presence of God to witness and celebrate the marriage of Shinji and Aya. New Zealand is very popular among Japanese honeymooners and wedding couples because New Zealand has very romantic image and there are um, several English style churches and also Japanese couples feel free, relaxed, away home from the country. When we have a wedding in Japan, lots of relatives, lots of bosses, lots of friends. So when we travel overseas to hold weddings, we can just feel free. That is a good point for us. Mm. <laughs> During her 10 years in the wedding industry, Vanessa estimates she's opened over 1,500 bottles of champagne, but remains stumped when it comes to the number of weddings she's attended. I've been to thousands of weddings over the years. I haven't counted. I would hate to count them all up. <laughs> the family have requested a catered dinner. So Vanessa has called in Joanna Lowry, a chef from nearby Timaru. She gets to work on the food while Vanessa prepares the room for the dinner party. Tonight we've got uh, orange and pumpkin soup for starters and then we're going on to smoked salmon and salsa verve salad. And then a savina for the main on sweet potato mash with oven roasted vegetables and then fresh fruit um, with New Zealand pavlova and we've got a raspberry frulli and then chocolate garnishes. We've done some shapes, little hearts actually. While the wedding party sit down to the first of their four courses, Vanessa, with two weddings still to go, keeps on working. It's five to seven and around half past seven I'm expecting some staff to arrive from Dunedin. We have clients arriving from Christchurch who are expecting um, a full beauty treatment tonight starting at about eight o'clock so my staff are going to start that at eight. The next morning Vanessa greets us with yet another rave review. As we were leaving the dinner last night um, the bride's father said to me it was the best meal that he'd had in 50 years, and I imagine he's only 50-something, so... <laughs> I thought that was quite a good comment. It's the height of the wedding season. Vanessa and her staff have had a hectic seven days. During this time, she's personally managed three weddings, overseeing seven others around the country, while still making time to plan for those in the weeks ahead. 
There have been times this week when I've had three or four hours sleep and this time of the year when the wedding season starts to get busy, you just expect not to have regular sleep and regular meals and eating on the run and you don't expect anything else, that's just part of the territory. Vanessa is in Queenstown for this wedding, which has been organised entirely by email. Petra and Klaus are from Germany. They don't have any guests with them, so they're on their own. They've been travelling the country in their camper van, so they're looking forward to a bit of luxury staying at Millbrook Resort. It's quite standard. However, for Vanessa, despite appearances, the busy wedding season is beginning to take its toll. Well, I really haven't had a day off. I've been working solidly for probably um, three or four weeks. But it, that's not unusual for this time of year. I, I get used to it, but it does get a bit tiring. I'm feeling a little bit run down at the moment. Arriving the day before their wedding, Vanessa takes the couple to meet the marriage celebrant at the chapel, which overlooks Lake Hayes. I've learned about New Zealand, I think, when I was a boy in a Discovery Channel. There was a documentation about the nature of New Zealand and the fern trees. It's special in New Zealand. You can't see this everywhere, nowhere in the world. And uh, I was so fascinated, so I, ever since then I saw this, I wanted to go to New Zealand. It was a dream of me. I too wanted, always wanted to go to, to New Zealand because of the beautiful surroundings, nature, untouched and unspoiled nature everywhere. Yeah. That's something you don't get in, in Europe or in Germany. Despite Vanessa's flagging energy, She's determined her clients will not pick it. I think it's all about wanting to please people. Petra? Petra. Hello. It's always been a part of my life, really wanting to make people happy. And it probably started with my parents, really, wanting them to be proud of me and wanting them to be happy about what I was doing. Not that I always managed to achieve that. When Vanessa was four or five, sometimes I would look at her and I'd say, is she my daughter or my mother? She was an old lady when she was a little girl. She was always very serious, knew what she wanted, worried, always worried about things. And, uh, but she was, she never caused, she was a great kid. Klaus and Petra have not told anyone except their families they are getting married in New Zealand. Yeah, we're planning probably to make an email in the next few days and say greetings from New Zealand and by the way. <laughs> You're in Queenstown and everyone that us here. Yeah, we missed the bunch of jumping <laughs> but we married. <laughs> While they thought their wedding was a secret, it turns out they were in for a huge surprise. <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful day. Yesterday evening um, we were at the reception of the hotel and we turned around and suddenly our friends from Germany were st uh, standing in front of us. Uh, it was the biggest surprise <laughs> in my life. But to find them, their friends had to use some detective skills. All they knew were Klaus and Petra were staying somewhere nearby in Queenstown. Yeah, the surprise was that um, the hotel, what we asked first, say call the number here. And they give me the, the phone, and I was like, uh, 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 I, I, did, I didn't know what I should say. So I was like, yeah, and I'm calling from Germany, how to know how you are. And so I was like, oh, it's fine, it's, it's OK. But what are you calling? Well, just to say hello and hang up. When our friends came in at the reception, well, I thought, this, this can't be true. Um, must be a dream or something did go wrong because they are in Germany, I'm on holiday and um, <laughs> why are they here? How did they come here? <laughs> it was, I, I was totally surprised. It was really funny. <laughs> I can't explain it. It's, it's really, really amazing. I have no words. We went today, uh, this morning, to Queenstown, the own town and was looking for somebody who rent uh, 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 a suit and we just was looking after one and the only one we get is this one. It's a little bit too huge and it's too long. <laughs> and I have, the only one is my, it's, it's, it's the shoes. The shirt is from Klaus, he bought me his one because <laughs> I only have a T-shirt. This is Matthew. Matthew, this is Petra. 
Klaus and Petra are getting married on their eighth year anniversary. However, Klaus has had to wait some time for this day. I asked her six years ago. <laughs> First yeah, time. He proposed quite some time ago. Um, well, my answer was, you are drunk. <laughs> because he was. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, you were drunk, a little drunk. <laughs> it was in a romantic town in St. Petersburg in Russia and everything yes. is so romantic and so I asked her. <laughs> then I said about a year ago, uh, you remember your proposal in St. Petersburg? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> and then everything happened quite quickly. <laughs> so I think he was really waiting. <laughs> How do we define love? Love knows no limits to its endurance, no end to its trust, and no fading of its hope. It was great. Wonderful. Really it was wonderful. Wonderful. Even the weather was great and the location, the garden. It exceeds all our expectations we have. It's what do you expect when you book a marriage in, in, in the internet? Oh, okay. Expectations are very low. I just think, yeah, okay, we try it. And now we are yeah. really... Yeah, we didn't actually know what to expect, so we just let it come and it was great. <laughs> she was so beautiful. I'm really proud of me. <laughs> Such a pride. And like Groundhog Day, another perfect wedding in the bag for Vanessa. At just 31, she has carved out a very successful career in the wedding industry. But at what personal sacrifice does this success come? I dream about relaxing. <laughs> I, I dream about switching off my phone and going to a sunny aisle somewhere and lying on the beach for seven days, but I don't actually think I could do that. Um, I will have my opportunities and they'll come later in my life perhaps, but at the moment I've got to make the most of what I have and it's, it's very hard to turn people down and say that you can't coordinate their wedding or you can't accommodate them or you can't do something for them. So what does the woman whose life revolves around organising weddings think of the institution of marriage? I think it's wonderful to see a couple who are truly in love and it gives me a lot of inspiration um, that that is something that I'll find in my own life. Um, I know that on their wedding day they might be truly in love and the next day they have an argument but I think that's all part of it as well. Um, it, it's very hard to be in a relationship and um, if they're really prepared to take, make the commitment to marriage, I think that's absolutely wonderful. I, I'm right behind them. While it may come at the sacrifice of a personal life, there's no doubting one thing. This woman certainly knows how to pull off the perfect wedding. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was just perfect, everything. Really wonderful. wonderful. Even the weather was great and the location, the garden. It exceeds all our expectations we have. Oh, it was perfect. It was a perfect day. Couldn't have asked for a better day. More than perfect. Thank you. Well, one thing's for sure, love is in the air, with an estimated 1,200 couples a year now flying to this country to be married.